Hey YouTube, quick video, it's been a pretty, pretty good day for me, I, I got a, a lot done and decided to put myself on a schedule, I hope I stick to it, I mean it's, it's nothing that I couldn't, can't do, it's just, uh, it's a schedule to make me be tired before I go to bed because I sleep uh late and then I just I get lazy and just and that's probably why I stay awake because I'm not really tired but I um stayed busy from seven no from six o'clock this evening I did a lot a lot of stuff so I'm just you know decided to uh change some things for next year but really not for next year just for forever and you know people make resolutions and things I think when I get my glasses man they're supposed to do it tomorrow it's gonna be the same frame though maybe they'll fix the frame and I, I think they're gonna give me some bifocals or something I don't know but I'm so glad I can see colors better and uh, everything is going well. I had a a little fender bender last week, and I don't know. I I I was I, it, I was in the right, but I made a right turn, and it was a turn for in my lane. I was in my lane. My lane could go straight or turn right. So I decided to turn right and when I turned right I saw something I felt something heard something crunching I said well, did I run over the curb and I looked and there was a car it was a woman had pulled up on the side of me and just made herself a lane even though the street is wide enough for a car to squeeze through there she decided to do that and she was there and that's why I hit her but the little girl, oh man, she couldn't have been no more than 20. But she was boohooing and crying, and there was a baby in the car, and nobody was hurt. But her, her car was damaged, but mine wasn't that much. A little paint on my car, maybe a little dent. But this little girl cried and cried, and I said, Well, honey, um, give me your insurance, and I, I hit you, so my insurance should take care of it. She started boohooing and said, I don't have no insurance, and they'll take my car if you call them, and I'll blah, blah, blah. And I just said, well, call somebody. So she called somebody, and I, I could hear it over the phone. I, I don't know if it was now. Yeah, it had to be 911 because I heard her say that nobody was hurt, but the cars were kind of hooked together. And this man was cutting his grass, so he came across and he, you know, directed me, you know, guided me to bag up, pull up, bag up, or whatever to get unhooked. Because the little girl couldn't direct nothing. She was sitting in the car lying. And uh, after we got unhinged, the fire department was there and we sent them all because nobody was hurt. And the little baby slept up through the whole thing. So I sat in her car and gave her my insurance card, and she took a, a picture of it. And but she, the tears, I said, "Baby, save those tears." I said, "Is nobody in your family dead? Is it? And you don't have a funeral to go to, so why are you crying?" Oh, I, I'm late for my job, and, I, and they're gonna fire me. And, and I looked at her. I said, you doing all this crying. You late for your job. Where you work? She said she worked downtown at some restaurant. And I said, you late for work? Yeah, I'm, I'm on my way to work. I said, but you got rollers in your hair. And you got the baby in the car. Who gonna keep the baby? And I knew right then she was lying. I mean, I, I mean a lying spirit. I pick it out so quick. But this girl... All this boohooing and stuff she was doing. You don't have no and I told her, I said, you know, all the shenanigans that you do, 
Don't be riding around in the car with your baby and you don't have no insurance. I said, you're in the wrong. Don't do that no more. And, and you know, I, I just, I don't know. I didn't want to fuss at her, but the line, that's what got me. You And I said, you go on to work or wherever you're supposed to be going. But she claimed she was from Arkansas and she just moved here. And she lived in an apartment by herself. But she got a handicap placard over the windshield, over the <laughs> the mirror in the car. I'm saying to myself, okay, so you got a handicap placard. This car ain't even yours. You driving. I'm saying all this to myself, and I said, let me get out of here. But this girl didn't call the insurance company before I could get home. But what I did, I, after, we, after I drove off, I made the block just to see how in the world could I have made such a terrible mistake and hit that girl. And and I I went because I go down that road all the time. And so when I looked, I was not in the wrong. She wasn't supposed to scoot up on the side of me. That's what happened. So long story short, the insurance company called my insurance company called me today and told me that uh, they studied the the street and everything and compared her story to mine. And they were dismissing her claim because he said she claimed that I was in the far left lane and just turned over in the right lane and hit her. And I told the adjuster, I said, now, if I was in the far left lane and turned to the right and, and cut her off, I look like I would have seen her, don't you think? And he said, yes, yes, ma'am, we, we are dismissing her claim and you are covered regardless they uh, she, but she did say she had insurance i said well she told me she didn't so she didn't show me anything but he said if she does have insurance they'll file a claim on her insurance so i don't know but uh if i want to get my car fixed i'll do it but you know your deductible is so high anyway i'll be paying a 500 dollar deductible for a 1500 dollar job you know so I don't know. I ain't married to the car. I'm just glad I can drive it. I'm asking the universe for a brand new car anyway that I don't have to pay for. <laughs> I get it like that. They say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? I say, he done done it. He done done it. <laughs> so I'm not worried about that at all. I was just thinking about tomorrow is the big day. My neck is hurting. That's why I'm holding it. It's, it feels better when I hold my head. I got a big old head. But I was thinking about tomorrow. It's a big day tomorrow for Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump. And I can't understand why he's so upset. I mean, you just he just walked out over the laws of the Constitution. And just, he just, I don't understand why he think. He wasn't supposed to be uh, impeached for this stuff. He just kept pushing it, kept on pushing it. So, and didn't admit to doing it. So, I don't know, but he is very mad. Wrote a six-page letter to Pelosi. So, Nancy Pelosi. So, he wants the letter to go down in history. <laughs> He's trying to supersede him being impeached. So, that's what he's trying to do. He don't want that on his record. But it's already there. I know he won't be removed from office. I don't believe that. Only way Donald Trump will be removed uh, from office is he turn around and moon the United States. Now, if he pull his britches down and show his butt, then he'll be removed. But, you know, he don't really uh, give a, uh, a fat rat about that either. He's already done it, uh, so to speak. So... Maybe tomorrow he'll pull his britches down and show his behind. But <laughs> I, one thing that's got me upset, and not upset, but I'm just watching it cautiously. And ain't nothing I can do about it because I'm not driving this ship. But the, you know, Russia is watching. The whole world is watching this. But Putin is his number one buddy. His, his buddy in crime, they both are gangsters. But Putin is, I don't know, I, I, I both of them gangsters, but this this uh, Russian ship is in 
getting too close to United States territory on the eastern coast. So they've been contacting it and trying to get it to respond. There's no response. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's no, nobody on this ship. And they are uh, kind of targeting the United States and want us to do something. So they know if it gets uh, within uh, so many miles of our waters and don't respond, we will blow it up. And it's nobody on this ship. I don't, I don't believe it's nobody on it. But when we blow this ship up, that's going to be all-out war. And Donald Trump and Putin, that's what they really want, to go to the war table. And they're not friends. Like I say, they're both gangsters. And that's what gangsters do. They fight over territory. So that's exactly what they're doing. Donald Trump is really, he really wants to go down in history. And he don't care who he take down with him. So just watch out for that one too. But tomorrow... It's going to be an interesting day. And I guess it'd be all on TV. I got to go to the eye doctor tomorrow. Shoot. Oh, there's a lot of stuff I got to do tomorrow. But in case I stay home and watch TV, I got to move tomorrow. But anyway, I'm going to shut up for the night. <laughs> I don't even know what the title is this video. I'll think of something. But anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.